Goldsmith Gulch. Creek. Creek. Bless you, honey. I will definitely look that one up. Monaco? Oh, we we're going to make it to Holly. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think we should go to Holly. Everybody up for Holly? Mile. 20 minutes. Well, I love it. It's fun to discover this stuff. See, you know, so I get home, you know, I'm exhausted when I get home. I have a great night's sleep, obviously. Um, and uh, then, you know, I type all this stuff up. And I really just go look at the pictures and kind of do a mile by mile right. sort of description. But as I sit here and, you know, when we were driving down here, so to get to our parking spot, we came down 225. Is there somebody living in there? Maybe it's a beaver. for yourself. <laughs> anyway, so we're coming down 225 and we take a run out of and I'm like, I've walked this whole way. You know, that's just really cool. And not many people have done that. And I've got a perspective now that nobody else has. this one woman that's walking with me. She's doing the high line. And uh, she used to be 80 pounds bigger. And she's been walking and she's gotten that off. And um, so then she saw this. Uh, I don't know how she saw it, but she's since become a Walk to Connect member, but she wasn't before. So I'm not sure how it got into her life. Anyway, so she told her husband, I'm going to do this. And he's like, you can't do that. You're, you, we don't know who you're walking with, and you better give that leader my phone number, and I want to know where I'm dropping you off and picking you up, and because he's worried about her. And uh, and so she's like, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be fine. So anyway, so we do our first leg, and she's fine, and she's totally enthused. Like, so then we do the, yeah. So then the last leg that we did, which ended up being longer than expected. So everybody's pulling out the pedometers and, you know, so 9 to 10 miles ranging. And she's staying there, she can't say anything. And she goes, I've never walked that far in my life. She goes, you're changing my life, Chris. I'm like, oh. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yep. A lot of stories like that. Yep. All right, let's see what this is. Well, you know, Jonathan hears those stories every day, you know. Yeah. Just yield or something? Yeah. Yeah. You know, when we get together and I call you guys my tribe, I'm not kidding. God, I'm not either. I say that all the time. I'm trying to call my tribe and we're all here. So Steve and I were living in Florida together. So we met what, seven years ago, like tomorrow or something, right? Or something like that? Seven years ago. Our fifth anniversary is coming up next week. And so we meet, you know, we hit it off. It's a great first date. Pretty soon he moves in, pretty soon we're engaged, pretty soon we're married. And 
in that time period, we start talking about that we want to move out of Florida. And his daughter was a junior or a sophomore or something in high school, and my daughter was in elementary school. And we both said we wanted to wait for her daughter to finish high school, but we wanted to move before my daughter got into middle school. And we had to wait for the real estate market to come back. So here's another garden. Ah, cool. So we had this really kind of odd window yeah. that, um, talking about um, where we want to move and kind of neighborhood we want to live in, what, and what some of our goals I are. So we want to be in the West. So we didn't want to be in California. Then we had a list. Uh, good Southwest airport, good weather, um, good schools, good neighborhood, you know, the, the typical everything else, right? But it was really somewhere in the Southwest, good Southwest airport. So Southwest Airlines airport. So. We checked out Tucson, Santa Fe, Albuquerque, El Paso, Phoenix, Vegas, Austin, I think that's it. And he and I do a lot of traveling, so a lot of those places we automatically checked off because we didn't, we didn't need to go because we already knew that they weren't what we wanted. And uh, we hadn't been to Denver, or we, had, we had individually been to Denver, but we hadn't thought it, Denver was not on the list because we thought it was too cold, too much snow. So long story short, <laughs> Hello. Uh, so was, there were cowboys and uh, Rocky Mountains and uh, <laughs> uh, So we come and visit. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We move here, right? So one of one of the things that was on the list was we really didn't have many friends in Florida because I worked out of my house. And I was a virtual employee, and I was on campus all the time, but there's a difference between a work relationship and a friendship. And with campus professors, I never crossed that friendship boundary with them, just because, for whatever reason, I didn't. And then, we lived in a neighborhood that was mostly retired, or they had little kids. So, we didn't really fit into the neighborhood. Look at this. A little nowhere piece of art. So, one of the things we said when we moved to Denver, we want to make friends. We're going to like consciously set out to make friends. I want to get a picture of this, I want to get a picture of that. And so, too far uh is that Glendale Park? Garland. Are we still north of 25? Yeah, because I Platte, yeah, I never, yeah, because then I hit the Platte River. Yeah. So what's this room with this guy here? The bench? So then, I said I'm going to have my half birthday party, 
right? Yeah. So I get on Facebook and I make a little invite and I send it out to my friends, my Denver friends. I send it to 70 people. And there's 70 people that I would really yeah. like to come to my party. They're not just Pretty like, amazing. oh, I should invite you because you're so-and-so's right. whatever. Right. And I was like, oh my God. For the first time in my life, I have friends who like me, that want to do things with me, that invite me to do things with them. And I mean, they're, they're my friends, and then he's got his own friends, and then we've got our friends. You know, it's like, it's really cool. It's quite a milestone. It took me 50 years to get here. Past Parker. <laughs> so I made some homemade ice cream today. I was hoping you would come back to our house so we can feed you some Bing Cherry homemade ice cream. picture of you in a fuck position. <laughs> Dawn. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> she says on the GoPro. <laughs> I'll get this. So the other night, Asher and I are at the Mojo Blue concert in my in my neighborhood. She turns to me and she says, when I kill you, I'm going to feed you all these people. <laughs> I'm like, Whoa. great! Oh, no. no parking. How are we going to get across this thing? Oh, no. But, no, 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 there's no parking. So, <laughs> I just love that we can't park here. guys are going to start dying off soon. <sighs> well, I heard somebody uh, a couple weeks ago on the bus. Somebody was saying something about... I think oh, I just talked about this spot. ...what was going on about she was in some places. Um, and she was saying that, but yeah. We just had some kind of a scare because we had four women here, children. And the woman she was talking to said, I'm more concerned about what kind of world is leaving you with these prisoners. <laughs> 
what's his name? Um, Aerosmith dude. Steven Tyler. Great place to watch fireworks from, wherever the fireworks are. Okay, so is this Holly? We should figure out like where we should get to for a car to come get us. And where are we? Um, is this Holly? <laughs> well, this is a bad spot. We need to get like near a house or a business or something that. Uh, let's get over here. Yeah, really. We want to shoot at 7:30. Yeah, we can we can hit Colorado in a half an hour.